Ali. This is it. This is Marvel Snapshots. Seatman Comics. This came out last year. And sadly didn't seem to get enough eyes on it. And it is somewhat of a masterpiece. If you want all the context, if you want an explanation for what this is, I went over that in the most recent all video, the all from March 13th. Consider the section about this in that video a preamble of sorts. I covered some points that I will not be repeating here about nostalgia bait and, and how this isn't that. Before I open it, I would like you all to guess how many British pounds I paid for this cover instead of the main Alec Rose cover. This is by, it is written by the philosopher Alan Brené and it has some absolutely amazing art by Jeremy Ordinary. I am trying to keep this video positive because that is what this comic deserves. But right now I need to say Jeremy Ordinary not being able to get ongoing assignments because he is considered too art school that is criminal this is the artwork it is great they have applied some effects to it to make it look like art printing like it is newsprint and a bit faded I quite like the retro effects it looks nice but the artwork underneath all that is great anyway it's not too art school it's good and I will say if anything I think the art school elements like the flatter colours they only make it look even better. The story is set in 1946 and it stars Seaman's Goldie Age girlfriend, Betty. And I think that is one aspect that raises this above all the other snapshots comics. And even the original Marvels and all its copycats. This is a pre-established character. We are focusing on someone we know rather than a new character inserted into history. Plus, because of the time period and her being called Betty... It makes me think of January Jones in Mad Men. So, instant win from me. She is gunning on a date with Seaman to the fair. And look at this art, man. Look at the M, F and detail. Seaman is dressed like a total dork too. If you are interested in Betty, she died in the 70s. She is one of Seaman's love interests, so she had to die. The best thing you can say about her death is that at least it wasn't Seaman who killed her. And it's not just the art that is great. The writer is Alan Brené. The Philosopher. And he does some great exploration of Seaman's post-World War I, I trauma, I guess. Seaman is suffering from PTSD, 
which sounds terrible, and I know it sounds terrible, but it's handled appropriately here. He is having trouble occasionally readjusting to peace. And then a man in a giant shark costume shows up. And that is some more instant win points from me. Someone should make a Curb Your Son of Nimrod video where they take that clip of me having a go at furries and then play all the clips of every time I have ever said a bad guy who is just a bloke in an animal costume is my favourite. The other snapshots books, they are very bogged down in social politics. And I think the one thing someone might level at this is there is a little bit of that creeping in with the shark being a Nazi and Seaman really hates Nazis more than anybody else. But this is set just after the war. This is... It feels less out of place to have Seaman who is still carrying some baggage from the war, punch a Nazi. And the shark man, I think he is called Shark Neville or something like that. He is actually a Goldie Age Seaman villain. He is plucked from continuity and even more impressive, Continuity, not in a handy book. We get guest appearances from some of the other invaders, or as they are now known, the all winners squad. We have got Yellow Flash here, and then we have the all team, including the second Captain America. And the second Bucky Man. I have always been interested in seeing more of the second Captain America. We had Captain America Patriot Man, which fleshed out the third Captain America. But we have never really had a story focusing specifically on this guy. Divin Gan naming some stories that he is in because I already know about them. I listed them all in my first take, but it was getting off track and I really didn't want to do that with this comic. It's a really, really good read. When I showed it off in the all video, nearly all the comments agreed that it looked great. But it doesn't just look great. It is a great read. This is... I avoid hyperbolic statements like... This is the best thing ever, guys. But this is, in my opinion, the best comic Marvel I've published in 10 years. I have no complaints with it. It's all terrific. The stuff that could have been or sounds like a problem just isn't. I would have offered the free code to the first person who wanted it, but it has already expired. I'm not even bothering to remove the sticker. Truly, this is a hidden treasure among Marvel's publishing. I encourage you to check it out. I think that you have to sort of tolerate Seaman as a character. 
or like the invader has maybe to gan with it. And Seaman's depiction is maybe too sympathetic and human for the Seaman we are used to seeing. But with art like this, I think it could even make someone a fan of Seaman. The idea with the post-traumatic stress is from him seeing concentration camps and burning stacks of bodies and mass graves. And I think on one hand, you could say Seaman wouldn't or shouldn't be overly affected by that but I think it is done well here and it was a really monstrous thing and he saw it first and I think it is more the case that he thinks it shouldn't affect him so he buried it and pretended it didn't but deep down did it, um... Anyway, he cries here, which is something you didn't see much. I can only think of two comics where Seaman cries. Over the same thing, too. Done much, much better here. At this point, all I can say is, please go and read this. Maybe tweet Jeremy Ordinary and tell him how his art in this is remarkably brilliant. And some of, if not the, best art of his career. I am glad I found out about this. I am glad I read it. And I am glad I get to share it with you. One of my favourite things to do with these videos, and it is totally sincere. It is a chance to share comics that I love and believe deserve more attention than they got or are getting. If even one person reads this issue based on my video, I am proud of that. This is something I endorse and want to see more of, and I hope you do too. There is no argument that this deserves the seven thumbs up.